Welcome to a other episode of our Learn Live Azure Hybrid Cloud Study Hall uh, on Learn TV. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of right? Yes. So, but it's awesome. So in this one, we are actually kicking off the series for Azure Arc, and we're gonna have uh, today in this one hour, one hour and a half, we're gonna talk about the introduction module to Azure Arc. Um, and I, my name is Thomas Maurer. I'm a senior program manager uh, for Azure Hybrid, and I'm joined here by Amy. Hi, I'm Amy Collier, a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. And I used to work so, with Thomas for, but for a short time, but we still, you know, hang out, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we were teammates for for just a couple of uh weeks or months i right. think um, <laughs> until we moved around but yeah so exciting so for everyone who joins us we're going to talk a little bit about the learn life concept and i will explain to you also a bit about microsoft learn and what we're going to do but you can obviously not just follow us here on that stream you can also open up the learn module uh, which we're going through today and you can do it by yourself you can do this right now but you also can do that later on after the video as well, uh, depending on how you want to do this. Um, and so I highly in encourage you to actually join us here um, for this specific module. Again, this is the first Azure Arc module uh, we will have uh, in our show. Uh, so again, you can scan the QR code or you can take that link here on the top and mm -hmm. you will open up uh, that specific Microsoft learn module now i mentioned that this is all about azure arc and our introduction to azure arc today uh, we're going to explain what azure arc is and how it can help you in your hybrid environment but amy why don't you share a little bit what we're actually going to have a look at in that specific learn module oh sure we're really going to lay the foundation for azure arc so what does it mean to have an azure arc enabled servers enabling kubernetes with azure arc so really how it kind of bridges the gap from your on-premises environment or maybe a VM in another cloud, um, how it can all be under one single pane of glass in the Azure portal, so. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Again, we're gonna show you some really awesome stuff today and I hope that makes will make your life much easier, especially if you're in a hybrid or multi-cloud environment. And I also see we already have a couple of people on the stream. Uh, so feel free to also ask your questions or say hi. Um, and we will obviously make sure that we can answer that. If we have enough time, we'll look out. I can see that Andrew from the UK is here. Uh, we also have Ratan joining us and a couple of other people. So awesome. Keep it coming. Um, yeah. Hi to everyone. So let's just jump right in and go to the learn module. All right. Now, before... I actually, before Amy and I are going to talk a little bit about like this learn, specific learn module, I know that not everyone for, uh, of you is uh, familiar with Microsoft Learn, right? Mm -hmm. So Microsoft Learn really is our free learning platform uh, where you can dive in into different topics, not just Azure Arc, but also other Azure and other Microsoft topics like Microsoft 365, Power Platform, Dynamics, and many, many more. and we offer something what we call the learning paths. This is like a path uh, you can take on. Like, uh, for example, we have this one is called Managed Hybrid Infrastructure with Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. And then you have different modules within that. And today we're going again through that module called Introduction to Azure Arc. Um, and in, hey, and internally we we compete with the XP. So you're, I see you're at level 12 and I got to catch up to you. I yeah, that you know, <laughs> that's actually a good point. Uh, so it's also a little bit of gamification here. You can get points. The more you do, the more you learn, the more you go through these learn modules, you will get more points. So I encourage you, um, if anyone is a master here in Microsoft Learn, please feel free to share your level <laughs> and your, your experience points you currently have. I know there are some really good people out there um, yeah. uh, who went through a lot of these. Um, so again, uh, as Amy described, we're going to have a look, especially today, on Arc-enabled servers and Arc-enabled Kubernetes. Now, we will also give you a little bit of a very high-level overview of the rest of Azure Arc. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I think it's very important to understand what's what is Azure Arc and what you can do with it. Um, and you can also see that these learn modules usually also give you some information about the prerequisites um, of that. And so there's like, obviously you should have some basic knowledge uh, of what an operating system is and understand a little bit of the fundamentals of cloud computing. But I think um, if you're here, don't go too hard on yourself on the prerequisites. We will see uh, that obviously we describe all, all these things. And again, if there are questions, feel free to ask them in the chat. We wanna really make this an interactive experience. And you can also see the different um, introductions here, uh, or I, I should say um, units, which you go through again with the dis different titles. What I also wanna highlight here at the end, we will go through the knowledge check. So many of these modules have at the end or even during the module, um, some knowledge checks. So to make sure that we actually understand what we just learned. And so you can then also join us interactively and vote with us uh, on these knowledge checks, right? So that's going to be absolutely awesome. So Amy, what do you think? Should we go and to the introduction part and start sure. talking about Azure Arc and hybrid cloud? Yeah, definitely. And I really think if you're a sysadmin in general, you'll relate to a lot of this. I, I mean, I think I was living under a rock when I didn't hear about Azure Arc and now I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like this is great. So yeah. Azure Arc, I mean, we all thought we'd be running maybe on premises for a while with our virtualization or maybe one cloud only. But now a lot of people are seeing, um, oh, I have Azure, I have Google, you know, I have AWS, I have VMware. Um, I have stuff on premises that I can't move. So, you know, I have to keep this data here or I'll get in big trouble. <laughs> so Azure Arc actually, as the name implies, kind of bridges that gap where you can bring it all into one pane of glass in the Azure portal. So you can use like Azure services to manage your on-premises VMware environment or your Google Cloud VM or application. So it's it's a really neat product. I'm really excited about it. Um, that you can enable like, cause the environment's so complex and now you're, you're simplifying the management. So you don't want like three tools to monitor everything. And I'm used to that. And this, you know, it just simplifies your life as a sysadmin or if you turn into a cloud admin after this, you know, so it's a great, great solution. Oh, absolutely. So I think you hit a very interesting point here. And that is like, you have, like you end up today I think what we realize is we end up having different environments, right? You have your on-premises environment mm -hmm. uh, and then you have your cloud environment in Azure maybe. And then you mentioned probably also other cloud providers in the mix. Yeah. And usually what happens or what happened before Azure Arc was that you have some management tools and deployment tools um, where like you would actually go and manage and deploy your applications um, on-prem using a certain tool uh, and then you have another tool in Azure and then you have one tool for the other cloud provider and so you ended up in having that like these, all these these different tools and you did not have the single control plane you don't have the view on it um, and now with Azure Arc we can really address this so to on a high level um, we're going to dive into what Azure Arc is but again we want to talk obviously a little bit about what the challenges are and I want to highlight like before we go into this is like what we have think at Microsoft, right? And I always quote Jason Sanders here. He was basically the engineering lead of all the Azure services directly under Scott Guffrey. And he did the keynote uh, at Microsoft Ignite 2019 in Orlando, which was basically the last, last big uh, in-person event when we still had in-person uh, events back then. Um, and he basically was talking directly in the keynote after Satya about hybrid, right? And mm -hmm. about especially about Azure Arc. And he made a very good comment there, which I always bring up. Uh, it's really, like he said, basically, we, we at Microsoft, we know that hybrid is going to be an end state for many of our customers and not just an in-between state until everything is moved to the cloud. Right. And I think that is always important because that shows how serious we take hybrid, right? It's not just that we actually gonna set things up uh, and then um, we, we like, okay, well, there are some offerings, but actually you should actually move to the cloud. Just migrate, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and the other thing is, what I also wanna say, Azure is really built from the ground up to be hybrid. Like mm -hmm. we had hybrid services before Arc, right? Uh, we had, for example, if you look at 
uh, Azure Active Directory together with on-premise Active Directory. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think about Windows Server and if you think about SQL Server and other stuff, there were many, many tools which you already had in this hybrid space. Um, but I think what is important to understand is, like I mentioned, that hybrid is obviously going to be an end state for, for many of these customers. So, yeah. Amy, why would a company actually be in a hybrid environment? Why would they like not move everything to the cloud? Well, um, I think I mentioned it before, but that data sovereignty, like maybe you have to keep it in a certain location, you know, certain sensitive data. Um, I know there's legacy apps. I worked at a company. We had a very, it was built in the 70s and we still relied on it and that wasn't going anywhere. So that would be another um, example of what would stay on premises. Uh, so it could be, you're just, there's some workloads you can't migrate, but you do want to manage them and engage those Azure services like Azure monitor for it. Um, there's also um, it could be the first step in your migration. Maybe you don't have the skill set yet, or you at least want to get started. All right, I'm going to start using Azure as my kind of control plane to monitor everything and then slowly migrate. So it could be a step in migrating. And then also mm -hmm. if you have like, you could even have multiple apps or apps in multiple clouds. So maybe you have a, this one runs better in Google. This one runs better in, better in Azure. I want to monitor all of it again. So you can use Azure Arc to keep that all under a single pane of glass. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think that that absolutely sums it up uh, yeah. greatly. And I think one of them, I, I just talked to a customer um, very recently, um, which who has like factories and retail stores all over the place, right? And he basically can use like Azure for their applications and stuff like that. But he said, well, like if the internet connectivity from one of my locations, like a factory or a retail store, goes down like the factory basically stands still because the app is running somewhere else. So we need to be able to run a part of the app in that factory. So even if like we don't rely on the internet connectivity, right? Mm -hmm. So that was very important, but then you can take, still take the power of the cloud, but then in the background uploading like data or whatever he needs to do, but the important part of pieces can really run um, where they are needed. Same thing for the retail stores as well. Like if the internet is gone, um, if you have a point of sale system, you definitely want that to keep on running uh, mm -hmm. and be able to make sales, um, even though uh, you don't have internet connectivity, right? And so that is another thing. And again, I also work with customers, as you mentioned, where they have a lot of data sovereignty uh, challenges where they just are not allowed to store data, for example, outside of their country. And if we don't have right. an Azure region there, they need to keep it somewhere in their data center. And that is obviously... Uh, can be challenging because you have that great cloud environment which helps you a lot all right then you still need to do it down. there right we do have a question from youtube i don't know if you can answer thomas um how does sql server benefit from azure arc that's an excellent question and i think i'm going to show that in a quick demo later on okay but great. obviously um there are multiple things you can do with with sql server there one thing we can take advantage and i'm gonna gonna throw that just out there. We can uh, take advantage of Microsoft Defender for cloud, for example, to actually check if your SQL server is configured securely, if all the settings are correct. Um, and we can actually get that and we can make recommendations on what you should do. And again, a little bit later on, I do a quick demo and we can actually show you how that looks like. Uh, but there's way more you can do. Um, so there's definitely a lot of benefits on the SQL server side. Now, one thing which we won't talk so much today is the other part of Azure Arc, where you can go out and, for example, deploy Azure SQL on premises, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of using the classic Microsoft SQL Server, you can bring services like Azure SQL into your data center. And we go, we're going to highlight that on the next page a little bit and, yeah. and just make sure that people understand that Azure Arc is not just about connecting infrastructure, but also helping developers and and, and uh, cloud architects to actually take advantage of cloud services. Um, so yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of interesting things we're going to talk about. So should we dive in into the next unit? Sure. Um, which says, describe Azure Arc. So as I just mentioned, I wanna <laughs> quickly highlight one thing. And again, we're going to have a look as the, as the learning path says, mm -hmm. we're going to do uh, a lot of talk about the hybrid infrastructure pieces, meaning, as you can see here, Windows and Linux servers and Kubernetes clusters. And I know that this is not everything. Amy is also going to talk a little bit about 
what else is there because we just announced very recently something very very cool uh i will give you that in just a second so that is what we call the azure arc enabled infrastructure pieces right we can actually extend the azure management the azure control plane and add services and resources again like servers and clusters um, to the azure control plane and then take advantage of azure resource manager and these management services that is the one side the other side which we have by the way in other modules coming later up is right. the azure arc enabled services piece and that allows you to deploy azure services on premises or other cloud providers now think of that for a second now if if you're a cloud architect or developer or it pro and you need to design an application um you obviously want to take advantage of these past services right because they, they add a lot of benefit less management for you better performance in many cases better resiliency and all that um but then probably someone says well our requirement is to run that application not just in azure but maybe also on-prem, or maybe even at another cloud provider. Now, before Azure Arc, you did not have the chance to run really these Azure services on-prem or run them even at other cloud providers, right? So you actually were falling back to either use containers mm -hmm. or maybe even VMs and to bring build basically a classic application architecture you did before that, just because these Azure services were not available anywhere. And that is something we can address with Azure Arc. So for example, people tell us, I mentioned Azure SQL. They told us, hey, Azure SQL is fantastic and we love Azure SQL and we would use it for everything, but we have this one location or we have multiple locations again where we do not have a good reliable internet connectivity mm -hmm. or too much latency. Or again, we have data sovereignty challenges, but we want to use Azure SQL. So what we do with Azure Arc is if, you, if a customer cannot use the Azure service in the Azure region, we are bringing the Azure service to the customer. And I think that is that is a pretty cool scenario too. And again, we have other learn modules and other learn live sessions where we go into that into details. But now let's, Amy, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Arc enabled infrastructure pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it mentions here Windows Server, Linux servers and Kubernetes clusters, but there is also more, right? Yeah, my favorite. Um... The VMware uh, environments are now Arc enabled. It's in preview, I believe. So mm -hmm. again, like you don't have, maybe you don't have a VPN client. You're in a coffee shop. You need to reboot a VM. You just log in in your Azure portal and you can reboot a VM. You can resize a VM. So it's like some basic tasks, but it's pretty cool that now you can Arc enable your vSphere environment. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I think yeah. I love the example you just brought up with like <laughs> managing <laughs> your VMs on a VMware infrastructure from a coffee shop, right? Through the Azure management experience. Well, that's when stuff breaks, you know, you're taking a break, you're at the gym, someone, t you know, texts you, messages you, call you, and you're like, okay, I'll reboot it, you know? <laughs> so it's good yeah. to have. <laughs> Absolutely. And so in the learn module, you also find this graphic, and I want to quickly highlight a little bit what, what that means. I think it's a it's a pretty good graphic. So if we start from the left side, so if we are a like IT pro developer, cloud architect, security engineer, um, uh, if you are responsible for compliance, um, like we actually go in and we manage stuff uh, on Azure, right? And we usually do that using like the Azure portal, the CLI, our dev tools and so on. And usually we, that's great for managing Azure resources. Now with this Azure Arc um, service, we can now connect things which are outside of Azure. So you see on the right side, mm -hmm. you see multi-cloud, right? So you see like stuff which runs at other cloud providers, edge locations. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about factories, retail stores, I mentioned that, or other on-premises stuff, for example, in your own data center, uh, where you can connect things like, as we talked about, like as Amy said, servers, but also VMware and Azure Stack, and so on, and we can connect that and manage that and get some visibility in that. Right, it could be a physical server, virtual server, so. Yeah, absolutely. So Amy, do we wanna dive in a little bit on like the Azure management pieces? So we talked about you can manage stuff, but what does it actually mean? For someone who hasn't probably used um, Azure uh, to manage like, like stuff in Azure or even stuff outside of Azure, mm -hmm. what do we have there? 
Well, in order, I mean, what I like is you can still use the tools you're used to. And Azure Arc just kind of enhances your tool set. Like you're still going to use Wireshark. You're still going to use um, Bash and Linux, but we're not replacing any of those tools. We're just enhancing them with the Azure por portal where you can now management uh, manage it and create Azure policies, um, governance, use, you know, our back um, within the Azure portal and use the Azure uh, Azure resource manager for, you know, sorry. Um, it'll show up next to your normal Azure VMs, which is real. like, for me, that was mind blowing too. Like that's a physical server. Now it's, it's in my yep. portal and I can manage it with the tools that I have within Azure. And then that allows you, you know, you can start, you know, using DevOps practices and um, enable your team to go even further with your environments. Now, I think you brought something up really, really cool here that you mm -hmm. actually see your resources, which are like servers, which are running outside of Azure yeah. next to your stuff, which runs in Azure. And I think yeah. you brought this, this is perfect. We can actually have a quick look on how that actually looks like. So. If I quickly switch to my demo environment here, cool. if I go uh, to my Azure portal, and again, by the way, this is not just a portal thing, right? This is really mm -hmm. behind in like really inside Azure Resource Manager. So even if you use CLI, if you use PowerShell, if you use APIs, you will get the same results. So right. if, if I go on the All Resources page, as Amy said, here I can really see um, all my Azure resources. and if you're not familiar with this, like everything in Azure is basically a resource or an mm -hmm. object uh, from a virtual machine, from a database, from a virtual network card, from a virtual network, even down to even an IP address. All these things are objects and they usually have a type. So if I zoom in here, you can see here there are different types. They're part of a resource group. They're basically mm -hmm. deployed into a location. You're part of a subscription. And then you can use things like tagging. And now what Amy said, and I think that is that is a pretty cool thing to show. If you're now a server admin, and again, we go and show that with servers, but obviously that also works with Kubernetes clusters and other things too. So if I want to have a view on all my servers here, so what I can do here is I can actually just filter and select a couple of types. So I'm obviously going to select all my Azure VMs, but then at the same time, I also want to see the servers, which I have already connected which are running, for example, here underneath my desk in my own lab or <laughs> at another edge location, or in your case, maybe in your own data center. So you select Arc and Azure, Ar um, sorry, server, Azure Arc. That means those are servers I connected through the, to the Azure control plane, um, and they now show up as an Azure resource, right? So they're not in Azure, but they show up as an Azure resource. So if I hit apply, you can now see, I can see now all my servers That's in great. Azure, outside of Azure, running at all the cloud providers, on-premises, all in one place. I think what's really cool too, if, if you click on one, it'll tell you it's a, you know, it's a Google VM or it's a on-premises server. So I thought that yep. was really neat too. So, if, you know, you're like, where's this coming from? <laughs> <Click on it. laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some cool stuff. If it's, uh, if it's uh, running at all the cloud provider, we can actually identify this and you can see here, mm -hmm. Um, I can then obviously use also tagging tag, to do certain yeah. things. If I zoom in here, uh, like I did, for example, a cost center tag, I add that to my servers. I also have a data center tag and I can actually see like, for example, there is Tom's home. So that's actually running really, that server <laughs> is running cool. at my home. And I can I now that's use- not an Azure Active Directory service, you know? Like... <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, that doesn't sound like that. That really sounds like something Tom would do. <laughs> So you could now go out and use these tags. Obviously, if you're not familiar with it, you could actually go out and filter. So what I usually do is like, hey, how easy can I now find all my servers from a specific cost center? Mm -hmm. And so what I can do here, very simple, I select the cost center tag and I like select the specific value. So I want to see all the servers running cost center 1002 um, and then apply that. And now it just filters by this. And this is really done because this is part of the Azure Resource Manager now, right? The mm -hmm. data running on these machines is still on-prem or is still at the other cloud provider. We do right. not replicate data from these machine uh, without like you wanting it. It's really staying on-premises or again, like a lot of cloud providers. I know I'm repeating myself here, <laughs> but that's a very important part. It's only like metadata we put in here. So you get that, that single control plane, that visibility uh, and so on. 
And we do have a question from YouTube. Um, Kappa asks, does Azure Arc rely on the Azure service bus? So I hope I understand this correctly. So Azure <laughs> Arc necessarily doesn't need like service bus or has dependencies on it. Like on the service side, uh, on the on the infrastructure side, so Azure Arc enabled infrastructure, what we do is you basically download a Azure Arc agent. You install that on the machine or on the Kubernetes cluster. And this one then connects outbound using port 443 to the Azure control plane. Hmm. So that, that is one thing. And then, so it's using um, either like you go directly over the internet encrypted using port 443, or you can also set it up behind the proxy. Or what you also can do is you can actually use a private link, which allows you to use a VPN or express route to do the connections with Azure. So if you have that set up and don't want to have every server connecting outside, you can also uh, leverage that. That's on the Arc enabled infrastructure side. Yes. Now on the uh, Azure Arc enabled services side, um, what you need to deploy like Azure SQL, for example, like what we call Azure Arc enabled data services, you need to run a Kubernetes cluster, right? And that, that we're going to show you how that looks like. It's actually then an Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster. And then you can deploy um, your Azure SQL managed instance on top of that. So there's no um, no need for, for that specifically. So um, we can also look at, okay, what can I do with Azure Arc? Now, this is really about um, the different pieces we, we can work with. Uh, and, and there are a couple of services, and we're going to have a look at that in the next unit from that module. Uh, but the module explains a little bit what you can actually do, right? I mean, the visibility is one thing I just showed you, but there's even more interesting pieces uh, like Azure policy, guest configuration, and we will dive into that a little bit later on. But think about it if you want to audit your servers, your environment to see if they are configured securely, um, mm -hmm. no matter where they're running, you can use Azure policy. Think about it as group policies on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> And then there are others, Amy, right? There are like other capabilities too. Uh, right. Um, I, sorry, I was distracted for a second. So, so oh, Azure Monitor. Yes, integrating with Azure Monitor is really important. And that's great because then, yeah, you have that um, Azure Monitoring, your on-premises environment, your VMs as well. And then, you know, you can use log analytics, um, so, yep. and then it, I also like the inventory of assets. So yep. you can tag everything. So we always, you know, what, what's on our, you know, what do we have inventory wise? What, what's the, um, the cost center number, you know? So it really, again, is like reducing all that management that you overhead that you had to do with the complexity. So tags come in handy as your monitor to make sure everything's behaving. Um, and then that inventory of assets, um, so. No, it's it's absolutely again. There's there's by the way much much more. We're going to show you that I think in mm -hmm. the next unit. So again, Azure Arc. I just want to sum this up. Azure Arc is not just limited to servers and Kubernetes clusters. Again, it can also do other things. Um, and we're going to have a look at like specifically about servers and Kubernetes clusters in this module. But there are other modules. If you go into our uh, Learn Live Azure Hybrid Cloud Study Hall series. Um, you can actually go out and, and see other modules. We will air them at other different days. Uh, and you can actually join these as well if there is more interest into that. So let's have a look, look at Azure Arc enabled servers then. So as Amy mentioned, um, this is not just for Windows servers or stuff like that. It's really mm -hmm. about like, hey, Windows and, and Linux servers uh, running on premises and, and, and we're in virtual machines or even physical machines or at other cloud providers. And so I think that's a pretty cool, cool thing to do. Yeah, as long as the OS is supported. I know there's a list of OSs supported. I think down to Windows 2008 or two, maybe. Um, as that's far as actually a fantastic point, by the way. I think the <laughs> module here has oh, it, has okay, it covered. Well. So I would well. like. So what I would recommend, by the way, and you're absolutely right. Um, mm -hmm. So we go down on like. The module obviously is written in a certain time, but you're always adding new operating system versions, right? Which are supported. So definitely go to the documentation page as the single source of truth to find out which types of documentation, uh, if that server is supported. Because again, you're adding those more and more, also depending on customer requests, 
Um, so there's definitely uh, some awesome stuff going on there uh, as yeah, well. It's always changing, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Amy, should we shall we have a quick look how we actually add a server? To yeah, that's great. I know there's an agent actually, involved, right? <laughs> yep. And what you actually can do with it. I think that would be yeah. <coughs> pretty interesting. So <laughs> let me ba switch back here uh, to my demo environment. And here I'm in the Azure portal again, as you as you hopefully know. Um, and if you want to do stuff with Azure Arc, I think the one place you should go is obviously Azure Arc, what we call the Azure Arc Center internally. Mm -hmm. That is really the place you do all of your Azure Star Arc stuff, not just the infrastructure stuff, but also um, the stuff for Azure Arc enabled services. Um, and so here you can do you do basically start your journey when it comes to a hybrid environment. So yeah, it's actually a service running, right? Yes, yes. I think that is also very important. It's nothing you need to like basically install to make the management capabilities ready for you. That's basically mm -hmm. the only thing you need to do is connect that server using like the agent. That is the one thing you need to install on, on your machines or clusters, but not like um, not something you need to set up. Like you don't need to set up a, a management server and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so you can see here, um, we talked about a couple of things. And you can see here the infrastructure part. I want to quickly highlight. Uh, you can see here that we can manage servers, VMware, vCenter, as Amy just told us about, um, Kubernetes clusters, Azure Stack HCI, um, and also SQL servers. And because the question came up, we will yeah. obviously drive, dive into this <laughs> as well. Uh, so you can actually see what, what else we have there and what we can offer. Uh, but then on the bottom, I again want to quickly just highlight this. There's also things like data services and application services. So what you can do here is, again, Azure Postgres, uh, SQL managed instance, API management, app service, event grid, function, logic apps. Oh, wow. Those are all things you can not just deploy in Azure now, but also on premises or at other cloud providers, which is, if you think about it, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So let's go and add a server, shall we? Yes. So if I click on servers here, and again, we're taking this as an example because it works very similar with all the other stuff as well. Uh, you can see here, I, I have all the servers running in my environment. Mm -hmm. And to add one, I have this add button. Now, this add button provides me then different wizards, uh, which I can leverage. So I can I have a wizard to just add a single server. And you can see here, if you read the text, it will help you generate a script, which you can run on your target server, right? So that it will really give you the script, which downloads the agent, installs the agent, and then runs the command to connect that agent to the Azure control plane with your credentials, to your subscription, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you also have like the chance, I will not go too deep into this because we have other sessions coming up. Right. If you want to add obviously hundreds or 200 of servers, you don't want to log in on each of these servers and actually <laughs> like put in your Azure credentials. Um, you probably want to just run uh, a script very automated and you can do that right. too. And then we have other features like how you can take advantage of this using update management or Azure Migrate as well. But Let's right. jump in and generate the script for a single server because then we can also have a look at the prerequisites uh, we have. So as you can see here, um, we have what we need is really connection to okay. Azure, right? So HTTPS uh, access to the Azure service. And you can see we, we have a link here which documents the outbound or the URLs which you need to be able to access from your server uh, as well. Um, I'm also want to quickly mention here, then quickly jump to this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that, okay, not everyone wants to have every server directly connected, even though it's secure and I use it for all of my servers. Right. Um, sometimes you're behind the proxy. That's also a possibility. Mm -hmm. Or if you can have a VPN or, or um, express route to Azure, you can also use the Azure Arc private link as well. <laughs> if you don't want to use... Yeah, you don't want to use a VPN. You can use Azure Private Link. Is that how it? No, if 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 you want to use a VPN. Oh, you okay. If you want to use that, like using direct, like usually the agent is configured the way that it directly goes to the public endpoints of Azure. Gotcha. With this one, if you set this up, 
you actually go um, use this private link so that the traffic goes over VPN or Express Route. So it basically have double uh, double encryption. And in case of Express Route, it doesn't even go through the public internet, if you will, oh, that's uh, great. because that's a private link, a real private link. Then with, with VPN, obviously, it still goes through the internet, but it's like an encrypted, encrypted tunnel. tunnel. Right. Yeah. Okay. And there's a qu another question from YouTube. Um, while using Azure Arc to manage servers outside of Azure, how do we maintain data privacy? That's a very, very good question. So um, as I mentioned, like by default, we're not moving data from that server mm -hmm. into Azure, right? The only thing we are doing is um, basically metadata, uh, right. like the server name, for example, uh, and, and stuff like that we need to do. And you, you can also configure that a little bit. If you think about locks, we obviously need certain locks. And we will see what you can do with it. But uh, for monitoring, for example, we, we need to obviously upload the monitoring data. But the right. actual dot data, like if you think about a SQL server, the database never leaves the server, right? It right. still stays there. Um, we don't have inbound access in that. So that's also something which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really one connection from that agent uh, to the Azure portal or to Azure endpoints, I should say. Right. <laughs> I hope that answers the question. I'm also super happy to take this offline to like have a look a little bit more. We also have very good documentation pages on that topic mm -hmm. as well, because that's not a question uh, we don't see. Uh, we get that a lot, obviously, because people are interested and they obviously want to know how that is handled, which is absolutely a great point. Um, so that is that is definitely something you you can check out on the docs pages where you have a good explanation on what is actually going through Azure and what is like the rest obviously is not. So good. Yeah. And then the last important, I think, would say prerequisite is actually that you obviously when you install the agent, mm -hmm. you need to have local administrative rights, right? So you have to have like because you install the agent and it needs to have mm -hmm. permissions. Um, so you need to set that up. And then this wizard helps you to set up the script, basically. It really generates a script. So you would obviously select the subscription. You want to, to join that server and also select the resource group. So for example, let's do, I have one here for Arc enabled servers. Um, again. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, when I was getting up to speed on Azure Arc, it did recommend like creating a resource group as a requirement. So because resource groups, it's kind of like a, a folder for in your actor, you know, in your group policies where like all of those resources might have the same life cycle. Or if you want to do, you know, Arc VMs dev, you know, and have everything in that container per se. Um, it's a good way to have it in the same environment because you do have all those little bits, the NIC, the IP and everything. And it looks crazy until you get into a resource group. So. Yeah, no, that makes absolutely, that's a great point because again, we're creating basically now like an Azure resource, if you will. Again, it's going to make a, 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 a representation of that mm -hmm. server in Azure. We need to obviously have like the same things we have for every every Azure deployment and resource groups, as you just mentioned, are a great way of organizing things. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also mandatory, right? So <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's for sure. Uh, well, you can also then just select the region. Now the region is to which Azure region is now that agent connecting, right? Mm -hmm. So in my case, obviously if I have servers in Europe, I want to select a data center is closed in Europe. Um, but you could actually, in, in theory, you can select any region you want to connect to. That's also, by the way, where the metadata is stored. Again, only the metadata, not the data of the server itself. Right. And then to connect the uh, server, you would uh, like you need to run the script. And on, on the Windows side, we run a PowerShell script. And on the Linux side, obviously, we would run a bash script or a shell mm -hmm. script. And so that is important just to generate the script. And obviously, which agent file should we download? I don't know for that. Right. And Windows, what? It'd be like an MSI package. And then Linux, like a what, RPM, DPM. I forget the distro yeah. for. <laughs> Depending on the distro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then here, we that's what we talked about. And I, I, I wouldn't really stress this enough because people always say, well, it's only public endpoints. And so, no, it's mm -hmm. not. You can also <laughs> again, go through a private uh, or through a proxy or a private endpoint um, mm -hmm. uh, as well. And if I've selected that, we can then go out and do some tagging. Like again, you can also do that later on. But mm -hmm. again, you can, for example, say, okay, where in which data center is that server running? We we give you a couple of recommendations here, but you can also add your own custom tags as well, um, depending on what you want to achieve, right? Like the cost center, for example, and stuff like that. 
it's nice if you have chargeback cost center <laughs> who's yep. paying for it <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I we have a lot of like that's a, like a lot of use cases are with uh, billing stuff and so on. Right. Hey, Christoph. Oh yeah, it's Christoph. That's nice. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Uh, so we have just Christoph. Uh, many of you know him probably when you talk about identity, Azure AD, and um, stuff like that. Um, so he is on the YouTube stream as well. So welcome. Uh, again, everyone, we are obviously looking at the comments. So please. Mm -hmm. Uh, feel free to ask your questions. Uh, but back to now what we have here. Uh, we now have this script. We can download that or we can just copy paste it. And then we run that on the local machine we want to connect to. And now again, by the way, Amy, this is this is something I get a lot. It's like the question is, okay, in the Windows side, uh -huh. is this just for servers or is this also for uh, Windows 10 clients? Now, on the... Windows 10 side, on the, sorry, on the Windows client side, like I was going to say Windows 10, obviously Windows 11, we yeah, also have Windows 11 and others. Mm -hmm. um, that we would not really, we're not really targeting this. Yeah. Uh, we Because for that, we would use Microsoft Intune, right? Which have like better capabilities for client management. Um, yeah. But then on the, we're really focusing, Azure Arc enabled service really is focusing on the server side uh, for that. I also see Chris Black, he is also, Great uh, Azure Stack uh, <laughs> guy out there. He does a lot of work on Azure Stack and Azure Hybrid. Nice. So great to have him on the stream as well. Um, and then uh, we can we can actually do that and, and run that script. And I again, I did that already. I'm not going to bore you uh, with downloading that. a script. I so think here it's kind of cool to point out too is in that script it, you just log in locally if you're doing multiple, you have that, have that service principle set up, right? Which is again, in another module, but if you're doing a one-off, it's easy if you know the local admin password, but. Yes, uh, that's a very good point. That's, mm -hmm. I think that, that you covered, like, uh, I think a very important part, like when I run this script, it asks for my credentials if I do single server onboarding, right? So mm -hmm. I need to log in with my Azure ID account and I obviously need to permissions for that. Uh, and again, that doesn't work when you have hundreds of machines or thousands <laughs> of machines. So you would create a service principle to onboard that. And that is a great, actually, session coming up, Learn Live, mm -hmm. with you and John Joyner, yeah. where you go into all <laughs> the details about how that is going to work there. So that's awesome. That'd be great. So now when we have a server here, the question is, what can we do with that server, right? I mean, mm -hmm. except for just seeing it. <laughs> right. So let's great, I can see it. Now what? <laughs> Exactly. So let's have a quick look. And the first thing, Amy, you can see, I think, is that it looks like an Azure resource, right? right. It looks like something which is really natural to Azure, uh, even though it's running outside of Azure. So if I look at the left side here, I have things like the uh, role-based access control. So I can use the Azure RPAC to say, hey, Amy, you should be able to access that and manage that server. Mm -hmm. But maybe Laurent, who's our producer, he should not be able to do that because he's not the <laughs> application administrator on that server. So he should not be, have access and not see that server, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously we have the activity log where we can actually see who did what to that specific server. Like we have with all the Azure resources. And I think mm -hmm. that is already pretty cool. And if we move to the middle here, you can see here the resource group, the subscription, uh, where we are part of. Uh, on the bottom, you can see the tags I added to that server. Mm -hmm. But if you go all the way to the right, you can actually see that uh, some special information about that server. So you can see I'm running Windows Server 2019 Data Center Edition here. And fun fact, this server, as you can see, is joined to a local domain, mm -hmm. um, tailwindtraders.local. Now, I have to highlight this because I get this question also a lot. A server doesn't need to be domain joined. So you can use Azure Arc. Uh, enabled servers without a domain, like if you're a service in a work group, or you can use it across multiple domains if you have that scenario. Uh, there's no dependencies on on a, dom on a specific domain when it comes to, to Azure Arc. So on the left side, I want to, before we go on, I, and we have a couple of things we want to talk a little bit later on, but sure. one thing I want to highlight because this, this I find so extremely cool yeah. is the security feature. So obviously in, in Microsoft Azure, we have something called Microsoft Defender for Cloud, which really helps us to secure our resources and, uh, and, and so on. And as you can see here, 
It also works now for Azure Arc-enabled servers, which are running on-premises or at other cloud providers. And it enables Microsoft Defender for servers as well. And they can actually manage that through, now, through the Azure Control Plane. And you can see here, gives me immediately recommendations on what I should do, right? It gives, gives me a little bit of priority here. So there's definitely something I should do and make sure that I configure uh, my servers uh, in the correct way. And on the bottom here, luckily nothing pops up, which is a little <laughs> bit the same for the demo, but it's good because I don't have a, a security incident or an alert from that server. So as soon as, like if I'm a security admin now, if I go now to Microsoft Defender for Cloud and I log in, mm -hmm. I don't just get alerts for my servers and services running in Azure, but also for all the stuff which is running outside. And mm -hmm. so that, that I find pretty cool uh, yeah. as well. Well, security always comes up. Everyone's worried about security and rightly so. So it's great that you can extend that built. I mean, Azure security is amazing. So to extend it to your on-premises environment. Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> so some other things I want to show and, we, and Amy and I go going to through like, for example, like the monitoring logs, we will just have a look a little bit later on in the module as well as the policy part, but what I also want to highlight is we now can enable change tracking. So if I hit change tracking, I can actually see all the changes which are happening on that specific server. You can see when there was like a service restarted or a service changed, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, if there was a software package installed, I can see and filter all of that. And I can obviously look at different timelines here, um, which I find is pretty handy. I mean, Amy, you have a lot of experience doing these things uh, on premises uh, as well, right? Like you were right. Oh, um, yeah. And when you're, yeah, digging through logs, or I mean, you do sometimes get the, you know, I didn't do that, and then, well, actually, you yeah. did. You logged in at two a.m. and you, you know, not to like, you know, <laughs> it's okay. Now, we'll remediate, but yeah. Or now, it's good so you can go back to a point in time where your server was working. You know, maybe you have a good backup or snapshot. You know, so yeah. it it's nice to have the logs. Um, I did have a question for you just popped in my head because when I was going over the Azure training, it says you need a separate log analytics workspace. Like if you already have a log analytics workspace set up, do you need to set up a separate one for Azure Arc enabled VMs? Oh, that's a good question. No, I actually don't know, don't need that. You can oh, actually okay. use uh, your like existing log analytics workspace. Okay. Uh, if you don't have one, you will obviously need to set up one. Right. But if okay. you have one, you can use like your existing log analytic workspace. For those who are like the log analytics works is like where the agent sends all the logs we need, for example, mm -hmm. for change tracking, monitoring, and all that. Also for the security stuff, that is the place where we actually send this to in Azure and actually store. So what you create is a log analytics workspace. And when you onboard a server and, and these services, it will help you. Now, Amy, why I actually ask you about like, why you can like, how do you do this? Um, is how long would it like, I, I remember that time too, right? I worked on premises. Now to have something like change tracking, inventory, like this, I'm not even speaking about the security features we have. Mm -hmm. To have that on-prem, it's not that easy to do, right? Like right. if you're a small company, you probably have the tools in place to actually get that. Like, Well, right, and even, um just your inventory of servers. I remember we had an embarrassing spreadsheet, you know, Excel, and then eventually maybe you get, you know, a, you know, service now, for example, where you can create inventory of all your servers. And, but yeah, it depends, you know, where you're starting, where you're at, you know, it might be an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> but here at least now you can create an inventory in Azure and it's definitely probably more accurate if someone leaves, you know, and that spreadsheet dies, you know, you so well. So um, I love that it just, again, you don't have to be migrating to the cloud, but you're bringing all these Azure capabilities to your on-premises environment. So you can stay, stay on-premises, but use the cloud to control everything and bring like newer resource, newer like security to your environment versus doing it all on-prem. Yeah. And the great thing is it, it works for you if you have like two servers, three servers, mm -hmm. or if you have a thousand servers, right? You can you can take immediately um, because the costs are really like pay per use. So obviously mm -hmm. it's not something, if you add an ARC enabled server and you don't enable like special things like change tracking and monitoring and security, mm -hmm. you just want to show, like show that server, uh, there's no cost in that. 
It's actually free of charge. So I will show yeah. you that in just a bit, but you can actually connect that server and you see it in Azure and you can do a couple of things like the tagging and all that uh, free of charge. And then if you need something like the change tracking, mm -hmm. you go to enable this and then you start paying uh, for that ingestion, for example, and that service um, in that case. Uh, something else, obviously, we also have inventory. So you can also see uh, the software inventory of that server, like all the patches of the software. Mm -hmm. So I know that this server has, for example, something installed. Let me see if that's true. So we have Windows Admin Center on that server. Yep, we do. So you can see here that this software is installed. And again, you get all that uh, as well. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, one thing I find super cool, and uh, Amy, I want to have your take on that one. Oh, sure. Uh, update management. Right. Okay. I mean, you can get rid of WSUS and handle update management through Azure. And I know I was actually talking to John Joyner where they're, you know, you can like they're updating a thousand on-prem VMs through update manager and it's like 40 bucks, you know, a month or something. So it's really just a cost effective way to make sure all your updates are coming from one place. And again, handling your on-premises workloads and your uh, Azure workloads or wherever they yeah. may be, your ARC enabled workloads. <laughs> yeah. So I, I also want to quickly, before we go and I show you a little bit more about that, um, there are two questions I want to like talk about. The first one is really, uh, the question was, let me quickly go and, oh, yeah. and go back here. Uh, can we use Azure Functions in Azure Arc to perform tasks on server outside? Meaning, I guess, outside of Azure. Right. So the idea is probably to run like um, scripts or, 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 or code snippets uh, on premises or in other places um, against specific servers. And the answer is yes, absolutely, you can do that. Like with Azure Arc enabled services, you deploy um, Azure functions on premises, and then you can actually run these also on premises in your own network uh, to address these. So that that is pretty cool. Uh, and then I have a other question, which was interesting because we just talked about change tracking. So the question was, um, do we have any like lag um, or or um, time between obviously something in change tracking shows up? And the answer is yes. There are a couple of minutes, I think, depending on when the locks are updated, because the call, like not everything is like instant, because we also mm -hmm. want to be obviously respectful of your internet bandwidth. So uh, there are certain intervals where we send these locks to Azure. So, but uh, I think it's like somewhere in a minute um, uh, space. I don't know the exact number. Maybe you do you know Amy? But um, no. Um, yeah, it's like some couple of minutes, and it's very well documented. Uh, but I don't, I'm not aware of like the exact time. But it's a little bit behind, obviously. Uh, if you're lucky, it can obviously happen that that interval is directly after the change, and then will pretty much show up pretty much then. But um, there's a certain amount, and again, we're speaking probably about five to fifteen minutes or something like that in that time frame, uh, if I'm right here. <laughs> so. What I can do with update management, you can see here, I can see all the updates missing on that server. Uh, and that's, that's pretty like bad of me. I have a couple of security updates I should actually install. So what I can do here, I can actually go and schedule an update deployment. I can give that a name. Let's call this WAC because that's the name of the server. Uh, I can actually configure that. I can select like it automatically detected that this is a Windows server. Okay. So I can now also, um, basically say, okay, what are my reboot options? So you can say never reboot, always reboot, or reboot if required. I think that is also my favorite option there, <laughs> right. um, which makes a lot of sense. Only if but, necessary. <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? It's like, but but in some cases you probably want to restart like anyway, maybe like you think, okay, maybe it's good. Um, and then when do you actually want to start that deployment? Now, I can say update now, which would mean like five to 10 minutes from, from now, it would actually install this, which is probably not super handy. Well, we, my Amy and I here are on uh, life, uh, on Learn Life. <laughs> right. So let's schedule this for another time. Mm -hmm. And I can actually select the time. And cool, the cool way here, I can also make this recurring. So I can say instead of all the time figuring out what patches do I need to install um, on, and then go out and schedule it. I can make this a recurrent task and say, let's do like every Tuesday or every Tuesday in one month or whatever, whatever my, my preferred schedule is, right. and then time it. 
And I can Let's also, read. oh, sorry. Um, again, working on the customer side, we always had a change control window, especially depending on the server. You know, and every server is super important. It can only be touched at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> whenever you want to sleep. So scheduling that would be great, you know, so you're not just having to wake up and babysit it. And <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that that's a great thing, right? I can now go out and easily do that and <laughs> use the same thing as I would use for my Azure VMs. I use this also now for my on-prem servers mm -hmm. or servers running outside of Azure. I can also select, okay, what updates I want to install. I can even do inclusion and exclusion of certain updates. I can run a pre and a post script if I need to. And at the end, I would just have that job and I could create that. Now, you probably tell me now, okay, Thomas, this is great, but I have 200 or 1,000 servers I'm going to manage. I don't want to do that for all my servers like manually, right? So if you look at this, this window here, like if you are in your Arc-enabled server, right, that is the one you actually have access to. You have permissions as an admin. That's, that's a server I can manage. Now, if you have enough permissions, you also have this, this button here which says manage multiple machines. And this will take you to the automation account where we actually have update management. And if you have enough permissions, you now see all the servers which are actually uh, uh, update management enabled. Yeah. So you have some here, like again, non Azure servers, which are ARC enabled. Mm -hmm. And then you have even here on the bottom, you can see you have an Azure VM, uh, which is also in the same update management. And I can then schedule an update deployment here. And the only difference I have here is I can then, instead of selecting just one server, I can select a group of servers mm -hmm. and schedule that for a specific group. That's great. Yeah, normally you test on dev, make sure dev didn't break, and then you go to prep. <laughs> exactly. And a fun story I had too is I worked at a place where we had, when we had to do Windows updates, we had to be on site, on premise. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Updating servers, I have to watch it update. <laughs> So oh wow! You come a long uh, way from that. Yeah, so yeah that's question. crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um, another question: Once we have the metadata on Azure for an on-prem server, can we configure dashboard and execute Custo queries? Oh, this is this is fantastic. A great um, question. <laughs> this is a fantastic question. Thank you very much uh, for <laughs> asking this, because I want to quickly show you this. Now, you're absolutely right. The answer is simply yes. But I want to quickly for those who are probably not familiar with Custo or the keyword query language, KQL. Yeah. Um, if you want to do some cool stuff here, um, we go to the, what is it called again? The, uh, the I think it's called the Resource, Resource Graph Explorer, Graph. exactly. Like sometimes I forget, like we have so many services and I forget <laughs> about this. So this allows me to run queries uh, in the Azure environment for the Azure Resource Manager, right? So instead of showing something in the GUI and like, filter through it, I can programmatically basically do that. And I think our your teammate, uh, Rob, uh, Rob uh, Trent, um, would yeah, be right. probably yeah. super proud of me uh, now, right now. Um, yeah. Or maybe not, because my queries are not that. Uh, <laughs> so if I want to have a list, for example, of all my Arc servers, I have a query here already prepared uh, just to show you. So if I zoom in here a little bit, this is the query. This is the keyword query language. And we use that in many different places. This is not ARC specific. This is really something we can do in Azure Resource Manager. So mm -hmm. I can run that query. And this will go through the Azure Resource Manager. And you can see here now uh, all the ARC machines, right? So because it does use the Microsoft.hybrid.compute machines, uh, that's the type of ARC machine. So it shows me all these servers and it gives me that list. Now that's cool. Um, but if I want to, for example, do a list of uh, all my servers, so I have a query for that, which basically says, hey, the same thing with Microsoft.HybridCompute, but also include servers which run in Azure, which is Microsoft.Compute slash virtual machines. So I'm running that query. And guess what? I can now see all my servers. That is basically the same thing as we just showed earlier on when we showed it on the page in Azure, like the all resources page. Right. Now, obviously, like if you deal now, if, if someone asks you now, okay, how many servers do I have in Arc? And how many, like how many are, or how many servers do I have outside of Azure? And how many do you run in Azure? So like if management asks you that, you could now go and actually count these, or <laughs> uh, we could simply do another query. So I have one where 
we actually go and group Arc enabled servers and Azure VM. So this is the query, super simple again. It does exactly list the same resources, but at the end, I do a count by type. Mm -hmm. And so if I run this query, I get the different numbers here as an output. So I can see, hey, I have um, 16 Arc machines and 26 uh, Azure virtual machines here. And if you want to make this more management friendly, as I call it, you can also look at charts and then you select what do you want, like a map or a bar chart. Let's take a donut chart because I'm getting hungry <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so you can now see this nice little chart here where you can see how many percent of servers are running in Azure and how many of them are running uh, outside of Azure, right? And you can do mm -hmm. uh, sorts of stuff here. You can also like, again, switch to the bar chart. And to the point that you can actually pin this to a dashboard, so you can actually add this to your start side of your Azure portal and look at it and they always see if there are any difference in your Azure environment. Right. Yeah, maybe you have like a migration path. I know we used to track how many, like, well, when we were doing server updates actually. So how many 2008 servers do we have? How many have upgraded now? We keep track, you know, so. Yeah. We, should, we should probably need to get back on track. I think we have about 30 minutes, so. Yep. So Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> so we spend a lot of time now on the Arc enabled service. Again, there is a ton of stuff you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we showed you a couple of things and we'll talk about more in, in just oh, a bit. Um, but if we go to the next page, we mentioned Kubernetes a couple of times, right? Now, mm -hmm. customers do not have just um, um, service anymore. They also have Kubernetes environments where they run their containers. And obviously, they can do that really great with Azure Kubernetes service running in Azure as a managed service. But then again, you have the reason to run these things also on premises or at other cloud providers, but you probably want to manage them in a similar way. Mm -hmm. So that is where Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes comes in. Um, should we quickly have a demo at this as well? Sure, if you think we can pull it off. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> There's always time for demos. So if I go back to Azure Arc, mm -hmm. uh, we can go to like in the list, not just select server this time, but Kubernetes clusters. And you can see here, I already added a couple of Kubernetes clusters here, um, which I'm running. Those are all running outside of Azure, right? Those are not mm -hmm. um, AKS clusters. These are really like clusters which are run on prem and some of them even at other cloud providers, similar as the servers. So, what I can do if I have a look at this cluster here, again, it looks like an Azure resource. You also get all the good stuff like monitoring, uh, logs, uh, policies. And again, we will talk about that a little bit later. Um, and security as well. So we give that uh, that information. But then one thing I want to highlight is we have a GitOps integration, which is pretty cool. So for example, in this case, I deployed an application using the GitOps configuration. Now, for those who are not familiar how that works is I basically store my application configuration in a Git repo. Uh, can be in GitHub, can be uh, somewhere else, can be a public service, can be also in a private repo, can be in an on-premise GitHub environment. The only thing, the, the Kubernetes cluster obviously needs to have access to this. So what we do here is with this Hello Arc application, I tell this application to go into my Git repo and pull that every three seconds, which in production is probably way too hard, but because <laughs> of the demo, you're going to say thank you because we don't need to wait the half an hour. Um, and so it, here's the link to the Git repo. So that's where my application is stored. And it does now a poll every three seconds if you have any changes. Now, let's have a look at what the application actually looks like. So that is the application. I'm very proud of it, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you. You're the first one to, to say that. Um, <laughs> Um, no, it took all the, the web design skills, right? But, <laughs> but now the thing is, there's a there's an error. Uh, it should not say hello, Azure. It should say hello, learn live. Yeah. And so we want to do that change. And I'm now going to that Git repo where that, store, where that code is stored. Mm -hmm. uh, and here you can see here my help chart um, where I actually give the configuration uh, of that server. And one thing we do is actually that message is a value which we can ingest into the application, right? Um, so usually what you now would do, you would obviously go through a approval step and developer would check in code and you would have a code review and you would make sure everything is correct. And then you would like do that and check that into, into your main branch and then it would get deployed. Now, 
I'm a crazy admin now. I need to <laughs> fix this immediately. So what I'm going to do here, and don't do that at home, right? This is now really right. uh, something uh, which you should not do. So let's do hello, learn live. And I directly do that change. Well, at least at least I, I do a message, right? A commit message mm -hmm. here. But I check this in directly in my main branch and do commit on that. Again, don't do this at home. Usually you would go and have your own branch and then merge it and make sure that someone <laughs> approves it. And, and if I switch back here again, you can see here, I want to highlight that again. We configured now on that Kubernetes cluster that that change uh, that it looks for changes every three seconds. Mm -hmm. And if I talk now long enough and I go to that application and I hit the refresh button, you see okay. now it's changed to uh, hello, learn live, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty cool. I think usually I get applause, but obviously because it can't <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, <laughs> doesn't work. Um, but think about this for a second. If you have one Kubernetes cluster, I mean, you, probably people would not tell me, why did you not just go and, and change the, the application on that Kubernetes cluster itself? And you would say, mm -hmm. well, yeah. Uh, but I would say, well, with the Git, I can at least see like all the changes, who made the changes, right. And, right. and everything would be locked. That's one advantage. But think about it for a second. If you have hundreds of these Kubernetes clusters with the same application, it would take me like literally three seconds to basically update that application on all of these. Um, and so that is pretty cool, pretty okay. simple management. Uh, thank you, Christos, for clapping uh, in the chat. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. So that is pretty cool. And again, uh, we don't have enough time to talk more, but it's very similar to the things we showed you uh, with monitoring and stuff like that for mm -hmm. Kubernetes clusters as well. Um, and they're also, by the way, I just need to mention that, that this is also now a great base to then deploy Azure Arc-enabled services on top of it. Mm -hmm. Now, Amy, um, we have one more unit to go before we actually knowledge check. So let's go into that. And that's sure. about Azure policy and Azure monitor. Right. So let me get just a sip of water here. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start with Azure, policy, uh, with Azure monitor first. Uh, and I know that you're going to tell us a little bit uh, how that actually works. So I'm going to yeah. open up our okay. environment here and go back to one of our servers here which we have here. And if I scroll down, I have logs and I have obviously insights, which insights. is the monitoring piece. Right. And yeah, it's basically showing you, you're gonna see your CPU utilization, your C drive space. Um, you can alert on that. Um, disk IOPS, that's always important. So you know, basically, you know, what you would see under task manager, but now you're bringing it into the Azure monitor space. Um, so experiencing... I think you mentioned it, but it was really quick for me. Uh, okay. Can I also like, obviously I'm interested to look at this, but I'm obviously not going to look at this at two o'clock in the morning. Um, can I set up an alert for, for this as well? Like if, oh. if the CPU threshold is too oh, yeah. high? It's for a, yeah, definitely. Okay. So you hit a certain threshold email or I don't know what, you can probably page out too if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're different. Like, so it's basically similar to like what I can do in Azure. It is Azure Monitor, so it's everything mm. which I can do in Azure Monitor. So that's pretty cool. And then yeah. something is what, what what I always find very cool is the, yeah. the map view, right? Yeah, that's really cool. So with that dependency mapping agent, it maps out all the ports that all those processes are talking to, um, which URLs. So it's yeah, it's really neat. Like port four four three, you're gonna see probably see Azure Arc, right? Yeah, so if we go through. So these are all the endpoints, basically, that server connects through, right? Mm -hmm. OK, pretty cool. And this is only public endpoints, or do we also have like um, internal endpoints as well? Is that only for internet endpoints? or? No, we can do private as well. Oh, yeah, I see something here. Yeah, 445. It's our domain controller, probably DNS. Uh, you know. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So that is pretty cool. Um, so no, that is awesome. Like I, I love what we can do. And now we can obviously also have that single view in like Azure Monitor for all our servers, mm -hmm. depending on where they're running. And again, also that also, by the way, is available for Kubernetes clusters as well. And there it's obviously more focused on the Kubernetes side. So you can monitor single containers, pods, and so on. Pretty cool stuff there. But in terms of time, I want to go very, very quick on one thing. 
and that's Azure Policy. Now, Azure Policy probably is, is like something which you're probably familiar with to configure your Azure environment and lock down that Azure environment so you can only deploy certain sizes of VMs and stuff like that. Um, but uh, there's a ton of, 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 of things you can also do with Azure Guest Configuration Policy. And I want to show you how you would actually assign this. I mentioned earlier that this is kind of like group policies on steroids, right? right. So I can assign a initiative, which is basically just a group of policies. Okay. Um, and I would obviously select where do I assign these. Now we mentioned that like they have subscriptions and group policies. And now this align, allows us to do this management pieces. And you said nicely, the life cycle management of servers and resources we can do with like subscriptions and group, uh, resource groups. So in my case, let's just select the, the subscription and then I'm going through and going to select one of these initiatives. Now we offer you a couple of built-in ones and you can see here, some of them are technical. Like, mm -hmm. ends, like check out the Azure monitoring agent and stuff like that. But you can also see a couple of them on, on industry specific things like UK official, UK NHS, PCI, um, yeah. FedRAMP, ISO and so on. And, and that helps you really not just for the Azure environment, but also for the operating systems running inside these v VMs. Oh, now yeah. one thing I want to show you is the, this one, audit machine for insecure password settings. So I can select <laughs> this and I think that's handy, right? That's, oh uh, yeah. So I could go to next, and this is new. So I can now go and say, hey, should I should I include Azure Arc enabled servers? And obviously, I want to say true because I want to mm -hmm. know that for not just service in Azure, but also for service running outside. And I would now go through and do some additional configuration, and at the end, it would hit uh, deploy, mm -hmm. and that would then obviously take a while to audit all of these machines. So, like in a good cooking show, I already prepared something here. <laughs> On the compliance, you can see now a couple of things. You can now see that, first of all, I do a horrible job when it comes to compliance. <laughs> you would not pass an audit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't, don't tell my manager. Right. Um, but so what you can also see is that I can have here already that, that the policy deployed. So audit machines with insecure password settings. You can see here that I have one machine which is compliant with that and all the rest does have some settings. Which Are is your not. passwords I love Arc or you know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my password. Oh, <laughs> you have to change it now. <laughs> now I have to go out and change everything. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see here all the the policies which are actually going to check like password age and 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 password length and and how complex it needs to be and all that for my service, right? So that that's a good thing. But more interestingly, as a now compliance administrator or security administrator. I want to see which resources are not compliant. So I can actually go in and I can now see here, if I look at my service here, uh, you can see if I look at the type, some of them are Microsoft.compute virtual machines, other ones are Microsoft.hybrid compute machines. So again, I can run these policies against all my servers, which is pretty cool. That's cool. And isn't that, that's the registration provider when you use Azure Arc, when you, you register yes. that, okay. Yes, absolutely, yes. Okay. So there's obviously a ton more you can do, but I think it's yeah. time for the knowledge check for us. <laughs> so I'm gonna, gonna switch quickly. Uh, just give me a second here. I'm gonna switch to the <coughs> So now we see if we actually taught people anything or if we just kind of, you know. Yeah, let's figure out <laughs> if we actually chat. know the answers. That, that's probably a good one. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch. Um, to that, so the knowledge check. And again, that is where you now can join us. So you yeah. can also join us and vote um, here and we can actually see how, how you're doing. So you can yeah. scan that QR code or you can just go to aka.ms slash polls. And so the first question really is, uh, what must an administrator do to register Windows Server with Azure Arc? And that's actually a good one <coughs> and good one that we actually showed that. So. Mm -hmm. It's about Arc enabled server because it's not about the Kube, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So let's go into the, to the possible questions. So is it A, install the log analytics agent on the server for onboarding? Hmm. So that is one thing. B, in, install the Helm free on the server for onboarding. Is it C, the administrator must install the Azure connected machine agent on the server for onboarding? So, 
I don't think I you can install log analytics unless it was already onboarded. So <laughs> that's a tricky one. And you're absolutely yeah. right. I, I agree with that. Like, because you can onboard service which are already connected through log analytics, like we did that before, mm -hmm. Azure Arc, then you can do that too. But I think like the question really is about, okay, what if a service is not onboarded yet and it's not connected in any way? It doesn't say that it's connected anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think like, so Helm usually that's something which is has to do with Kubernetes clusters. So I would definitely say it's not B. Um, and so I think it must be Has C. Be. Are you agreeing? I'm feeling good about C. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> And guess what? We are correct. So Yay. thank you very much well, uh, <laughs> for the help here. And the audience so, got it as well. So, <laughs> you want to take the next question? Sure. All right. Which of the following Azure services must an organization implement to manage and evaluate compliance of its on-premises Windows Server computers? Could it be A, Azure Policy, B, Azure Arc, or C, Azure Monitor. So we're managing and evaluating compliance, but they're on premises. This is where yeah. I'm like, are they onboarded yet? I don't, you know. Yeah, that, I, to be honest, <laughs> I think that's a tr very trick question. Tricky question, to be, to be yeah. This is, this is a very trick question. Yeah. I, I think it's fair to say that it's not C. Right. I Azure Monitor would not, yeah. I, I, I think we can compliance. go by that. But and, I would say, it would be A and B, right? Because you would need ARC and you need policy. Yeah. And it's like chicken and the egg kind of. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would say the same. Now, now let's do that like it would be a Microsoft exam. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what would you do first? <laughs> what would you do first for it? Like to, to use Azure policy with on-premise server, we obviously need Azure ARC first to like enable that server with Azure ARC. Right. So, uh, so I yeah. don't like that question. I also don't. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, uh, I also don't know, like our audience, what they are voting for. Oh, uh, but too. Yeah, Azure Arc, Azure Policy. Yeah. yeah, that's a trick question. So if you have that not right, um, uh, don't worry. Uh, it's a difficult one, but right. yeah, it's it's Azure Arc, right? Yeah. So that that's the thing. Uh, again, I would Rick, I would tell that. This is the first step. You need to do Azure Arc first, and then you can assign a policy. You cannot assign policies to on-premise server which do not have Azure, which are not Azure Arc enabled. Right. So that that I would like to, to explain <laughs> that. But again, uh, it's a little bit of a mean mean thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the question three, um, I will take that one. Sure. Which of the following? Uh, can an administrator use Azure Policy for when auditing an Azure Arc resource? Hmm. Is it A, configuring the time zone on a Windows operating system? Is it B, validating the settings such as configuration of the operating systems, applications, and environment settings? Is it C, restricting access to log analytics data based on permissions to the corresponding Azure resource? So again, tricky question, I would say. Uh, not not easy one to answer. Um, so I would let's go with C first. Um, C is really about that like lock access and that role based access control I was quickly mentioning. Right. Um, so in the past, you needed to actually, if someone if you want to give someone access to the locks, you would need to give access to the lock analytics workspace. Mm -hmm. That meant. He was able to see all the logs in that log analytics workspace, which is obviously not really a good thing in, in many yeah. cases. But with Azure Arc, we can actually get that role-based access control. So you, when you look at the logs only on your server, you only have access to the logs from your server, right? Mm. Even though they're stored in the same log analytics workspace, you only get these logs. But I think that does not, well, I'm sure it has nothing to do with Azure policy. Um, right. So then it's about A and B. And one thing you can definitely do, I would say, is validating settings such as configurations of the operating system, applications, and environment settings, such as I showed you, for example, with the passwords, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have A, which is actually configuring something. <laughs> now, fun fact, 
when this question was designed, it, we did not have like every capability. So now we have even more capabilities and we can do settings and on, on these machines. So we can Maybe actually set other. configurations yeah. on the machines. So if you say A and B, both of them are correct, but for the for the question, uh, for the sake of the of the thing, when that was written, it was actually B, right? So you can validate settings and configuration, uh, operating systems and applications and environment settings. Yeah, it's great that you can remediate now too, not just oh, this is messed up and I can't do. <laughs> like, yeah, I can fix it as well. Yep, I think you bring up a very good point. We should do another session on on that one uh, <laughs> right. for sure. You want to take the next one? Oh, sure. Which Windows Server extension could an administrator use through Azure Arc to enable Azure Modern Insights on servers? So another kind of tricky one, because A, custom script extension. I mean, that would be running custom scripts. B, log analytics agent. C, Microsoft dependency agent. Again, tricky. But we did have to use, you know, to see those dependencies and on the monitoring page, we had that dependency agent installed. So I'm leaning towards that, but then there's that log analytics agent. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, good point, definitely. So I, A, I know what the custom, and I think many of you also know what the custom script extension is. I think it's fair to say that this allows us to run a custom script against right. the server, um, which I think, again, we can we definitely have to do differently uh, when it comes to Azure monitoring. So I would not. I would definitely like say A is not an option. Um, so we have B and C, uh, mm -hmm. and again, monitoring is based on logs. But then, as you said, we needed the dependency agent to do that. Right. So we would definitely say, what do you, what what do you say? Would you go for? I, would, I think C. Okay. I the agent. I I agree with that one. I would also take this one. Yeah. What does our audience say, by the way? Oh, I kind of split. Also three split. for log analytics, three for I, dependency agent, one for custom script. It's again a very mean Tricky. question. Yeah. It's not again. If you are joining today and you're like selected now, a couple of wrong answers. Don't question yourself. Those are really <laughs> tricky questions. Uh, and I, I have to say, I did not make these questions up. I just want to. We take too, no right? responsibility. <laughs> Maybe it was Laura on the on our producer, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was also not him. It's like <laughs> but, uh, tricky question. So let's see what it is. And it's C, uh, it is the dependency agent. So that that was good. So with yeah. that, I mean, for an introduction ready. course, those are hard questions. <laughs> well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But that is why we were here to do this learn live session, right? And help right. help with that. Um, do it so, together. Let's do a quick summary. Amy, what did we learn cool. today? Wow. I think we went above and beyond even, but we enabled a server. We deployed that script to onboard uh, one server that was on premises. And then we enabled Kubernetes and you ran that beautiful script um, to update your server. <laughs> um, but really describing what it takes to plan and what Azure Arc brings to your environment, whether you're just going to stay on premises or and you just want to use Azure capabilities or do you want to eventually migrate or, you know, just bringing those services closer to you. And then again, if you want the private endpoint link, you know, so it's not exposed to the internet, there, there are so many options to secure the, the environment. So it was a really great learning experience. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I gave you, really, it was a ton of stuff in that module, like to like really, uh, but I think it, I would focus especially on the fundamentals, right? I know there are more um, learned modules coming up, which go right. into more details in all the things we just showed you. Uh, but I think it's important to understand at a very high level that with Azure Arc, you can do two, two main things. You can connect Azure Arc enabled infrastructure, meaning servers, uh, Kubernetes clusters, um, uh, VMware vSphere environments, Azure Stack mm -hmm. HCI and others yeah. um, to the Azure control plane. So you can actually manage them as an Azure resource. And on the other hand, which we didn't dive in too much, but we mentioned it, the Arc enabled services piece, which allows you to run our, uh, Azure services outside of Azure. Doesn't matter again, same thing for, for the Arc enabled infrastructure. Doesn't matter if it's running on-prem or at other cloud providers, um, you can do that as well. 
So if you want to learn more, we obviously have a link here. Again, you have a QR code in the link where you can go out and uh, discuss these topics and modules and, and go through this uh, uh, again. I also recommend, by the way, we have something called the Azure Arc Jumpstart Project, um, which is Leo doing. By the way, he also has a set, an upcoming session or maybe even multiples uh, in this Learn Live series about Azure Arc. So definitely join that one as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so the Azure Arc Jumpstart Project really helps you to like test these things. Like if you don't have an environment you can connect, um, it can be tough, right? So with Azure Arc Jumpstart, you can actually you get automation scripts to build these scenarios. So you can use that for POCs or demos. But you can also, in theory, you could do that and take it and take these scripts to actually enable stuff on your production side as well. So definitely check that out. There's a ton of different things around the Jumpstart project. Uh, pretty cool stuff as well. And then obviously, again, go through the learned module. Now, if you just watch this, uh, we did not read all the text and we did not hit right. all the points this learn module makes. So we highly recommend that you go out by yourself and you go through this learn module. Also, by the way, like Amy said, to get the experience. <laughs> I think that is very valid uh, uh, as well. So definitely go out and, and check that out. And that sets you up for the next module, right? I mean, yep, absolutely. And then that is what, what we're looking at. So we have upcoming sessions in this um, Microsoft Learn Live Azure Hybrid Cloud Study Hall. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to laugh at the title every time. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I, I apologize for it. <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> but again, there are more sessions, more of these Learn Live sessions coming up. Uh, we have the next one scheduled for April 21. It's like one in the, we have one in the European time zone. Uh, which is focused on Azure Stack HCI core technologies. But then we also have one again in the evening or in the morning of PST time zone. Yeah. Um, so you can actually go out and again, there's another ARC one on this topic. Mm -hmm. And if you can't make it to all of these, by the way, they're also recorded. They're available on demand, similar as this session as well. And Amy, you have another session coming up as well, right? You have another Learn Live session yes. about Azure Arc. Yes, I have the plan and deploy Azure Azure Arc enabled servers at scale. So instead yep. of just installing on one, we'll be showing how to deploy at scale, which will be really cool because John is really enthusiastic about Azure too. So it was, it's fun working with him. No, that's <laughs> it'll awesome. be a fun I, session. <laughs> I definitely recommend that you check this out. And again, you will have a little bit more insights into uh, Azure Arc and how you deploy that H and on Azure Arc enabled servers. Um, like because now we just hit the surface uh, for all of that. So with that, um, I would say thank you very much, Amy, uh, for joining so today. Uh, it was great to have you uh, on uh, the Learn Live, yeah. um, on Microsoft Learn Live Azure Hybrid Cloud study. study Hall on Learn TV. <laughs> um, and also thank you very much for everyone watching. Uh, again, thank you very much for everyone who asked the questions and so on. Please recommend us join the next one um and again uh hit the subscribe button on our channel channel yeah. thank you very much on twitter and ask more questions i love answering questions so <laughs> awesome thank you great thank you <laughs>